Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to thank you guys for stopping by and checking these videos out from us. Uh, also, you can follow me on social media if you like the content on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, also, give me a quick like and subscribe. It helps these videos reach a broader audience and it can help a lot more people. It's free, it's easy to do, but it really helps me out and I really appreciate that. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video and we'll see you on the next one. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is something that I actually talk about with customers quite a bit. Um, I always wanna explain it because I never wanna feel like I'm going over someone's head on stuff, especially if they're starting out. Uh, the purpose of these videos, and this video in particular, is to kind of make you a little more comfortable talking about the features of the kayaks because again, this is going to affect how you can, you can kind of see the kayak on the water and how it performs based on how it's designed. So this one right here I'm gonna talk about is rocker. So rocker, it refers to the shape of the bottom of the kayak, kind of that banana shape, that you know rocker, you know, the bottom of a rocking chair. So you'll see this in extreme cases in your whitewater kayaks where it's got that almost that severe swoop, uh, sharper angle. That's gonna allow you to turn right and left really quick, gonna be able to spin around and change directions just as quick. And it's gonna look like, you know, something with a really uh, good rocker is gonna look like you can spin it around like a bottle 360 degrees on the floor. Uh, what that gives you again, you're gonna be able to turn that thing really quickly, do a 180, do a 360 really quick. What it does, it sacrifices your straight line paddling a little bit more. So that boat is gonna wanna shift back and forth um, unless you've got a really good keel line, which this one here does that really well. I'll go over that term here in a little bit, but just talking about rocker, just again, the shape of the kayak and what that gives you. Uh, the second one is gonna be just the basic terminology, and that is the hull of your kayak, the H-U-L-L. Uh, I'm gonna spell some of these out because I know my, my southern accent tends to uh, create some confusion on videos here, but the hull of your boat, that refers to the bottom of the kayak. Just the bottom, not the sides, not the entire boat, just the bottom. So the hull designs, again, that's gonna tell you a lot about the kayak. And a lot of you like to look at the hulls of the boat uh, that I show. I'm gonna start doing that a little bit more on some of these, because again, uh, me talking about stuff can be one thing, me showing you is a little bit different. So the hull of the kayak, again, just the bottom of the kayak. And a lot of the terminologies are gonna refer to the hull of the boat, the hull design. What you get, what you, your give and take is what, kayaking is a lot of give and take. So if you're wanting to get something on the extreme end of something, you're usually sacrificing something on the other side. Uh, so kayak designs is a very delicate balancing act. It's what makes some kayaks perform in some ways a lot better than others. And again, that's why we, we try to find out what somebody is using a kayak for, what is their intended purpose before we start talking about a kayak. So that's hull. The third one is gonna be chine, C-H-I-N-E. Chine refers to where the side of the kayak meets the hull. You're gonna have two different terms on this. You're gonna have what they call a soft chine and a hard chine. So soft chine, I'll show you here on the Tarpon 105. And you can see here, not, you know, it's a little bit rounded. You can see these ridges here on the sides. You can see this right here. Um, but you got the hull of the kayak and it's a little bit rounded there. That's what you call a little bit of a soft chine. Soft chine will give you maybe not as much stability, but it's gonna help with your handling if you're wanting to lean into a turn to turn it a little quicker. A hard chine, now this is the Targa 100. So you can definitely see there. So you see where the bottom of the kayak, you see this little ridge right here. It's more of a right angle here. So your hard chine is gonna give you a little bit more stability and it can sacrifice your handling a little bit. Now, in some of your C kayaks, so these are your long touring style kayaks, a lot of people like a hard chine on those because when they lean that kayak into the water, that hard chine, that right angle, 
will create a little bit of a side keel going on there. So it gives them a little bit more uh, control over the kayak, but on a wreck kayak, your hard, uh, your hard shines are really going to affect your primary stability, which is the next term. So when I talk about primary and secondary stability, the easiest thing to explain that as your primary stability is that initial wiggle when you're in, when you're up top, when you're level, how much play are you going to have on that? So the extreme case of a primary stability is going to be your bona fides. Uh, probably the perception outlaw is probably the most prominent primary stability. So you can kind of see you've got those catamaran style pontoons on the edges there. So what do you get with that? You get superior primary stability. It's going to feel like you're standing on a hard surface like the ground here with very little movement. Um, your very little movement can do a lot of things for you. It gives you good stability, but it is going to sacrifice that steering, that maneuverability, that paddling. That's your give and take with your stability as you're usually sacrificing a little bit of maneuverability having that. So primary stability, again, that initial wiggle. Your secondary stability is once you get past the primary, it'll feel a little loose and then you'll catch. You'll feel some resistance. So when you look at a kayak on the sides, see these lines, these little angles on the kayak here? That's where your secondary stability comes into play. So a lot of your maneuverable kayaks, you want to lean a little bit. You want a little bit more control over the kayak versus the kayak controlling you. This, once you lean, you'll feel a little bit of resistance when the water hits those lines. That's your secondary stability. So if you're looking for a kayak for rivers and creeks, you want a little bit better secondary stability than you do your primary. It allows you to move that kayak a little bit more. Because remember, if you have a really flat bottom, you have a lot of primary stability. If you're in choppy water, the bottom of that boat is going to want to stay parallel to the water surface. That's going to now that water is going to be moving that kayak around the same way. So if you're in some rapids, you're in some some chop, some offshore, that primary stability is going to be throwing you around quite a bit versus maybe a little bit better secondary stability and a little less primary. It allows you to kind of move that kayak with your body and keep it straight if you're in some really choppy water. Now, if you're going out on the lake, calm flat water, again, primary is going to be good for you unless you're covering a lot of water. So some of these kayaks do kind of both really well without being extreme on one or the other. But again, personally, on rivers and creeks, I like a little bit more of a, uh, a looser primary stability and then that secondary stability. That also helps if you're leaning over to get something out of the water. That secondary stability will catch. And again, that, that's the best reason to take your kayak out on some shallow water. Practice tipping it over, not for laughs, but to really know the limitations of your kayak and your primary and your secondary stability. If you get to learn that about your kayak really soon, it, you're going to enjoy it a lot more out there on the water because you're going to know what your kayak is capable of and what its limitations are. So the next one is going to be your keel line. K-E-E-L. Again, that line, this refers to the keel. So this is going to be for your V style. Um, your keel is going to be the point on the front and on the back, usually where your, your uh, uh, your skid plates, you know, usually you'll have a keel on the back and a keel on the front. Some of them do a really good job of having a keel line down the entire kayak. So I'll just show you the tarpon 105. You can see you've got the keel here. Again, this ridge on the front. And that kind of flattens out a little bit, but you can see the keel line, that little ridge that goes down the kayak. And then on the back there, you see on the back you've got it comes back to a point, that's your rear one. So what that allows you to do, that is gonna help with your straight line paddling. It's gonna help keep that kayak straight. A lot of your recreational kayaks will have just the front and the rear keel, and it'll be a little flatter on the bottom. That flatter gives you a little bit more stability where you're sitting at, 
and it allows you to kind of glide across the water instead of sit down in it. So if you've got those V-style hulls, if your keel line goes the length of the kayak, it's going to help give you superior straight line paddling, but it is going to make it a little bit harder to turn because that V will give you resistance when you're turning it if you've got it all down the entire kayak. Uh, examples of pronounced keel lines on the entire boat are your touring style kayaks. Uh, again, straight line, open water. These are going to be your 16, 17 foot kayaks, uh, really thin, but again, a bullet in the water. Not going to turn as quickly. That's why you see a lot of rudders on those, but that's kind of what you get with a keel line. Um, again, you see here on the Targa, see how it's almost got that, uh, that Titanic style keel. Uh, again, that's a good entry point that's going to help keep that kayak straight. Uh, a lot of your, your cheaper kayaks out there, you'll notice when you're paddling it, that kayak is just wanting to fishtail on you back and forth. This kind of prevents that a little bit, and once you get up to speed, it makes that kayak go straight a lot better. Also, when you stop paddling your kayak, is it going to want to continue to go straight, or is it going to want to veer to one side or the other? That's where your keel line helps. So, Another part of the kayaks, I'm going to put these both in the same category, is when you hear us talk about bow and stern. So bow just refers to the front of your kayak. Stern is the back of your kayak. Guys, that's really, <laughs> that's really all the explanation you need on that one. It just refers to, you know, if someone's talking about features on your bow, it means features on the front of the kayak. Same thing with the stern, it's going to be on the very rear. Um, deck just refers to the top of the kayak. So the things we've already gone over, the hull is the bottom, the chine is the features where the bottom meets the side, the deck is just the top of the kayak. So when they talk about deck padding, they mean, again, padding on top of the kayak. So you heard me talk a little bit about rudder. So a rudder is a fin that goes on the back of your kayak usually, and it's going to go down in the water and it's going to turn the kayak. So a rudder is a fin that turns, and I'll, I'll do the, the rudder control here. So see how that's going to give you your right and left turning. A lot of times when you see them on paddling kayaks, they're on your longer kayaks and it's going to allow a longer kayak to handle a little bit like a shorter one. Also, uh, some people like to have those on moving streams. If you're drifting, you can have just a little rudder control right and left and it's going to, you're going to be able to control that drift. Now a skeg, on the other hand, um, your skeg is really prominent on like your Hobies. Uh, I don't have a pro angler here, that one just left here. But a skeg is going to be a fin that drops down under the kayak and it's going to hold it in place on a straight line. Um, the Bonafide RVR has one, so I'll show you that real quick. And a lot of times they're, they're just simple flip downs. So you see here, you've got this little lever and you'll see it right here. So see how it goes in, goes out. So what is a, what is a, what does a skeg do for you? So a skeg is really great if you're paddling upstream and it's going to keep the kayak, uh, sometimes the, you know, the, the water or even wind can push the rear end of the kayak out and spin you around. That skeg will keep you straight a lot easier. It gives you a little bit more resistance to your turning, um, especially if you're just wanting, if you're in open water, you're going across the lake and you don't want to mess with the rudder or steer as much. You just want to go straight. That skeg really helps with that. You'll see that a lot on some whitewater or adventure style kayaks where, again, if you're paddling upstream, you need a little bit better tracking, you know, straight line paddling. Dropping that skeg down will make a, uh, a really maneuverable kayak a little bit more into a touring style. Again, they're not rudders because they don't steer you. They just kind of maintain. Uh, also, like on a paddle board, you'll see the fin back there. That fin kind of acts as a skeg, uh, helps that board track a lot better, 
helps it perform straight line paddling a lot easier. Uh, and that brings me to the next one is tracking. So when you hear someone say tracking, and this is a very common term used in kayak, tracking refers to straight line paddling. How does that, how does that boat track in the water? So the best way to, to, uh, to test your tracking is paddle it, get it up to speed, and then stop paddling. Will that boat keep going straight? Will it turn to the right or the left? Usually right is the, the way they go if you're right-handed. Um, but you know, also if you lean a certain way, uh, a lot of people have a, kind of a natural lean and they don't know it. A lot of times that affects your, your turning and your tracking. But a tracking kayak, again, it's gonna usually have a nice keel, sometimes a keel that goes all the way down the middle of it that helps keep that kayak, again, straight. Most kayaks will fish a little bit right and left when you're starting out at a slow speed, but once you get up to speed, it's gonna straighten out and perform a lot better on that, uh, that straight line paddling or your tracking. And finally, bulkheads. So bulkheads are something you see on maybe a mid-level to high-level sit-inside kayak. And what it refers to, it's a foam block, kind of a cross member or a wall in the kayak. Uh, a lot of them are meant to aid in flotation, but also it's meant to segment your hull. So say on the Aspire 105, if you look back here, usually they're located behind the seat, but you can kind of see in there, you've got that sealed block there. It's got some, uh, some uh, silicone adhesive kind of on the sides. Now, over time, of course, your silicone adhesive can kind of break down a little bit, especially when the boat flexes uh, over time. You can always kind of repair that with additional adhesive. But again, uh, if you dump it in the water, it's meant to slow down um, your whole kayak in uh, swamping and in sinking. Uh, again, I, I enjoy it because you know if you've got stuff stored in the back here, it's a good way to kind of keep it dry. Uh, a lot of times you're going to get more surf or more water over the back or over the front. So a lot of times you'll see these to kind of keep water out here the best possible. Now, again, water is nature's most destructive force. So again, uh, don't think that's going to be 100% waterproof. Water will find a way, but it can kind of slow things down. Uh, you'll see it here also. This is a Jackson Tripper. And you see the back hatch there, but behind that seat, you can also see that sealed bulkhead. So it's just meant for a wall. You'll see a lot of foam blocking in sit-in sides or sit on top, sit inside hybrids, kind of like the, uh, the FX12 here by Native. And you can see you have some foam blocking. Again, just, uh, you see this right here. Uh, so just some flotation aid there. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, again, the whole purpose of this is to get you better, uh, better versed in the terminology. Some of us will use a lot of this terminology and not understand that not everybody knows this terminology, and that's okay. But these are just, I'm sure there's some other stuff out there that I'm not covering, but these are kind of the most common, the 10 most common terms that I use, that I hear people use. And it, hopefully it gives you a better understanding of what we're talking about and a better understanding of how, uh, how important it is to know the design of your kayak and also the importance of knowing the, the features and also the limitations of how your kayak is designed. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got a value from this video. I hope this helps you in your search. I'm always here to help. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Uh, if you have any experience on any of this stuff, again, drop some knowledge in the comments. Uh, there's a lot of people that read the comments that may be uh, new to the industry and may need some additional help. But again, thank you so much for watching, guys, as always, and we will see you on the next one.